All right, so in the last video, we learned about while loops in Java. Uh, there are other types of loops as well, um, but today we're going to just uh, take one more look at while loops and something a little bit different that you can do with them. So last class, we did uh, things that were simple, like printing the numbers 1 to 100. So to do this, we need uh, three main things, really. Um, we need to create a loop variable or a loop counter. So that can be any variable. It could be x, could be i, could be even a word like num. Um, okay, and then you have to assign it to a beginning value. And then we need the word while with a Boolean expression. So something, a, a condition on which we, we keep running the loop. So basically, as long as i is less than or equal to 100, I'm going to continue this loop. Okay, and then inside braces, you put the body of your loop. So I am simply just printing i. I'm printing every value of i, starting at 1 and going all the way up to 100. And then you decide what you want i to go up by. So I want i to go up by 1. Okay? Um, all right, so today we're going to... Um, look at how to use a loop with user input. So I've got a, a class here called while loop with user input. And I just want to do a simple program where the user is going to enter seven integers. Okay. Um, now you could do this with seven variables, but I want to use a loop to do this uh, instead. So of course we're going to need to import java.util.scanner. And then inside your main method, we're going to create a scanner variable called scan. All right, and then I'm going to have a little prompt, just a little instruction uh, to enter seven integers. Okay, so I want a loop that's going to run seven times. So I'm going to set up a loop counter. I'll just call it x, and that'll be one. And I want to run this loop while x is still less than or equal to 7. So as long as that's true, the loop is going to continue running. And then don't forget this step in here. We're going to say x++. plus plus. All right. So now, inside here, I'm simply, I'm going to make a, uh, a variable, int num. Okay, so that's going to represent the number that they're entering. And so we're simply going to write uh, num equals scan dot next int. Okay, and that's it. So what am I repeating over and over again? Well, I am asking them to enter an integer and then I'm storing it into uh, a variable num. Uh, and then the loop is just running seven times. So I'm not really doing anything with these numbers. Uh, I'm simply just asking them to enter these values. Uh, so if I compile and run this, uh, oh, I am actually, I'm going to quit this and restart. And I'm going to say print line. So this is a, a rare case where I, I'm going to say print line because I want it to go down to the, the next line. Uh, okay, let's try that again. All right, so now I can enter seven integers. And when I get to the last one, it stops. The program stops. And I can't, I can't enter anything more. Okay, so that's that. Uh, if we want to make it a little bit more interesting, It'd be neat to display the sum, so the sum of all these numbers. Now, I actually don't know what the sum is, so I'm just going to put a question mark right here for now. Um, so this is quite easy to do. You just have to create a separate variable called sum or total or what, whatever you want to call it and assign it a value of 0. And then inside the loop, after you get the integer from the user and they're going to store it into num, we're just going to add that number to my total. And we do that by saying total plus equals num. Okay, So that will add num to total. And again, this these three lines will be looped seven times. So that code will run seven times. Um, and every time I keep adding this number to my total. And then um, at the very bottom, so when the, when the loop is finished, see, this is outside the loop, I can say uh, the sum is, and then I'm going to concatenate my total variable. All right, so let's have a look at that. 
Uh, let's do two, three, one, zero, negative one, two, negative two. Okay, the sum is five, is that right? Five, six, five, seven, five. Yeah, looks good. Okay, so there's a, a program that's a little more meaningful. Um, okay, and then one more kind of neat thing that you can do with this is instead of entering seven numbers, let's let the user decide how many integers they have. So I'm going to add a little prompt here that says how many integers. And then they are going to enter whatever they want. So let's say they enter five. So then I'm going to, I'm going to get rid of this line here. And so they are simply going to enter five integers and then it's going to display the sum. So whatever they enter here, whatever the user enters first, that will determine how many times the loop is going to run and that determines how many numbers are going to be entered. All right, so to do that, um, I'm going to change my prompt to say how many integers, okay? And then I'm going to create a variable here called, uh, okay, I can't use num because I've already used num here. So I'm just, I'm just going to call this how many. Okay. Uh, again, you're not allowed to use spaces in a variable. You are allowed to use underscore. There are some programmers that, that do that. I just like to have uh, no space, no underscore, but I use a capital letter for the, for the second word. Okay, so that's going to be scan.nextInt. So now I have a variable that is storing the first number that they're entering, so, so how many integers we want. And what's really cool is you could just use this variable and pop it right here. So instead of seven, we're going to put how many. So again, that, that, I don't know what that number is. That, that could be five, it could be 25, it could be a thousand. We don't know what they're gonna enter. Um, but whatever they enter, that's how many times this loop is gonna run. Because I'm running the loop as long as X is less than or equal to how many. Okay, let's give that a try. So if I compile and run it, and if I say, okay, how many integers? Okay, you know what? Now now I want this blinking cursor. Now I want that to be up here. So sorry, give me one second. I'm going to close and restart. Uh, so I'm going to change that to print. And let's go again. This will look a little bit better. Okay, good. So I'm going to put four. All right, so one, six, two, zero. And then it tells you the sum. Okay, I can run it again. Let's test it with just one. What if I put one? So I'm going to put one number in, uh, eight. The sum is eight. That's good. What if I test it with zero? So if I put zero in here, uh, hey, the sum is zero. That's correct. So it didn't let me enter any numbers and the sum is zero. So that, that actually works. Um, okay, so you have a nice uh, little program here. Um, Okay, I'm going to show you one more program. Uh, so I'm going to copy this stuff. And I'm going to make a new class called Password Program. Okay, so this is a, this is a neat one here. Um, so let's set this up. And I'm going to call it Password Program. Okay, so what I want this one to do when I run it, it's going to say, enter the password. And so, I don't know, I'm going to guess computer. And then it, it's either going to say incorrect or correct, depending on whether I got the password right. Um, but if it's incorrect, I want it to say try again. Okay, so then I could enter zebra. And then maybe that's incorrect again. And then I'm going to let them enter another try. Uh, password. Incorrect. Try again. Um, Apple. Incorrect. Try again. Okay. So this will keep going until they get the password right. Now, I know what you're thinking. What's the password? Well, that's up to you. So as the programmer, I want you to come up with a password. So I'm going to have my password be eagle. 
Okay, so once they enter Eagle, then it's going to say access granted. Okay. All right, so how would we write this program? Well, I'm first going to ask them for their first guess. So I'm going to do that before the loop even starts here. So right away, I'm going to say enter, what did I put here? Uh, enter the password. Okay, and then I'm going to make a string variable, not an int variable, because they're entering a string. And I'm going to call it guess. So that's a good name for that variable. And that is going to be scan.next line. All right. Okay, so now I basically want to keep asking until they guess the word eagle, until they enter the word eagle. So I know you're think you're probably thinking of using an if statement here, but we can use a while loop and then that will allow them multiple guesses instead of just one guess. Um, so what I need to say here is while guess is not equal to eagle. Now, this is not valid code but I just typed it in here just so that you know what, what we're looking for. So we want to run this loop as long as their guess is not equal to eagle. So as long as they don't get it right, I want to continue asking them for guesses. So to do this, you might be tempted to say this. Kind of makes sense. While guess is not equal to eagle. Kind of makes sense, except you can't use this for strings. We have to use the dot equals command like this, and then I have to put a not at the beginning. So I know it looks kind of weird, but this is the not symbol. Uh, oh, I need another closed bracket to match up with that one. Okay, so I'm basically saying while not guess dot equals eagle. I know it sounds kind of weird, but this is how you compare two strings to see if they are not equal to each other. Okay, so that actually works. There's one other way you can do this. If, if you don't like that, if that looks a little weird, you could say while this is equal to false. So as long as this command here is equal to false, then uh, continue the loop. Okay, so that's one option, but I'm going to stick back to the, uh, the exclamation mark here. Okay, so now the big question is what, what do I put in the loop? What, like what am I going to repeat over and over? Well, I'm going to say this. So I'm going to print incorrect, try again. Okay. And then I need something very important. I need them to enter another guess. So they get to have another guess. So I'm going to use the same variable. I'm going to use this variable again. Okay. You don't have to say string guess. We just have to say guess because we've we've already created the variable, right? Whenever you put the data type, that creates the variable. So we're just going to use the variable and reassign it to scan.nextline. Okay. Uh, all right. So this loop, this this loop will continue. It will repeat over and over and over again until this becomes false. In other words, until they become equal, then the loop will stop. But as long as they're not equal, this loop will continue. Okay, and then finally when the loop is finished, that means they they got the word right, then I'm going to say access granted. Okay, let's see. Oh, I need to close off my main method and close off my class and let's have a look. So if I compile and run the password program. Okay, so computer uh tree banana um equals, or sorry, e eagle with a capital E, no good. Eagle, all caps, no good. But eagle, lowercase, is good. So access granted. Okay, so this will run as many times as it needs to until they enter eagle, all lowercase. Um, if case doesn't matter to you, so if you don't care about uppercase, then all you need to do is change this to equals ignore case. Okay, but I don't want that. I want this to be a strict program. They have to enter this uh, perfectly. Okay, that's it for now. We will practice with uh, while loops, and then in the next video, we'll look at another type of loop in Java called a for loop. Okay, bye for now.